and welcome back. Chapter 19. I hadn't seen fate at all that night. I knew he'd been there from the dent in his pillow. So when I got in the office the next morning, I went straight to Harold. I knocked on his open door to get his attention. Yes, he said and waved me in, not bothering to look up, but he seldom did. Something odd happened. I slumped into one of his chairs. He looked up briefly, shook his head, and looked back down at his papers. I'm not surprised. I went on a job yesterday. Alone? His head perked back up. Yeah. He looked me over, nodded, and then looked down again. There was an older man there, and even though his daughter didn't see me, he did. Close to death. When humans start straddling the line, they're sometimes they sometimes pick up on us. Ah, I leaned back in the chair. How are things going? I picked up a pen from his desk and started nibbling. My partner was a bastard. I had an old guy who looked like he shouldn't even be breathing who stalked me. My murderer, my murderer had been keeping tabs on me from childhood and the door guys hated my guts and made it their purpose in life to have me wade through dirty gully waters and sink in mud piles. It could be worse. Technically, it could be. I still had pizza and coffee after all. Harold looked up at the exact minute a slip of paper appeared in my lap. Maxwell Stein, Fort Myers Beach Pier. What is that? I jammed the paper in my pocket. Huh? That paper, give it to me. He stood, leaned over the desk and pointed to my pockets. Oh, that? It's just my notes. I stood and started edging towards the door. The door. No, it isn't. I saw that show up. It should have come to me. That's my note. I get the notes. Harold, I don't know what you're talking about. I pulled that piece out of my pocket. I just kept shaking my head as I got closer to exiting his office, hoping he wouldn't follow me. You're leaving at the end of your trial, right? Yes, no worries there. I could see him deciding whether it was worth pursuing the paper, and then he finally slumped back in, back into his seat with a scrawl on his face. I opened my phone and speed dialed fate as soon as I got out of, the, out of hearing distance. Meet me in the front of the office. What is that? I handed Fate the piece of paper. He looked down and then back to me. Harold gives this to you? No. Then where did you get it? I just got it. How? It just came to me. But why are you getting memos? He was holding the paper in front of my face. Back off. I don't know why, but I did, and I bet this is his target. I ripped a note from his fingers. Are you in or should I find this guy alone? He pulled the slip from my fingers. Come on, he yelled, walking briskly towards his car. Where are we driving? I want to drop off my car off at my house. The jinx are upstairs. Why not have the kids drive it? I already knew the answer. He probably, probably didn't like them to drive his car, but it was fine for me for my Honda. It didn't take long to drop it off and pull up a picture of the guy online so we could make sure we recognized him. I let fate make the call for the door guys, hoping they wouldn't realize I was with him until after the door opened. It didn't work. The door started open oddly from the bottom up, but stopped about a foot and a half off the ground. What the hell? Fate asked, walking closer and bending down and trying to yank the door open. He turned to me. What's the deal with this? Ask them. I said, pointing to the guards. They don't speak. He turned toward me, hands on hip. They point? No, they don't. I guess you don't know everything. I walk closer, but not too close to the guards, to the guard on the right. Why is the door like this? A glove hand raised and pointed to the ding on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I swung back to fate. See, they're still pissed off about the hailstorm. His face looked disbelieving. You're mad, he asked. They nodded and then pointed to me. 
Fate motioned for me to follow him as he walked about 20 feet away. Why is everything to do with you so strange? He looked at me as if I had some sort of explanation for him. What? That they're mad? I did dent their suits. It's not that surprising that they're upset. If someone stained the only dress I had, I'd be pretty pissed too. That they're communicating. Have you ever tried to talk to them before? He shook his head. Well, maybe it's not that odd. You can lack certain social graces on occasions. No, you don't get it. Everything to do with you is odd. How so? <laughs> you want a list? No, I don't need a list from you about how weird I am. You're a transfer. We haven't had a transfer in eons because they don't work out. You transferred over within a week of losing our other karma. Spots usually stay open for a year or more. You're still so connected to your past life, you never should have even been an option. And yet, and besides having no social grace, you stink at truces. <laughs> I walked away from him and back towards the door, screaming over my shoulder as I did. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do most of the time. He cut in front of me, dropped to the ground, and rolled through the opening. Come on, he called out from the other side. I paused right before I dropped to the ground myself. I hope you both have a really nice day, I said to the guards. They turned their heads away and stiffened. It didn't matter. I'd crack them. I rolled right onto the sandy beach. Fate reached down and grabbed my hand, yanking me to my feet and letting go quickly. Hey, how'd I end up in this? I realized I was in a gold bikini <laughs> that I filled out quite nicely. A cute black wrap hugged my hips. Did you pick this out? The guards did. He said, but wasn't actually looking at me. Over here, he said, weaving his way through the people stunning, sunning themselves. He was in bathing trunks, but had a shirt on over it. Considering I was in a tiny bikini, the shirt struck me odd. He looked like he was in superb shape, but maybe he had something under there he was uncomfortable with. I see him, he pointed the, to the distance. There, the guy in the blue trunks and the surfboard. Are you going to try and get close? Maxwell was floating around on his surfboard with a couple other guys. Not me, you. Me? Shouldn't the more experienced person do, do this one? He was still staring out at the ocean. Hello, can you look at me for a second? He looked back at me and I immediately wish he hadn't. It was that look. I knew what could come from that look. Completely thrown off kilter, my tongue darted out to wet my lower lip while I crossed my arms over my chest. I couldn't decide if I should close the gap between us or run screaming down the beach in the opposite direction. I realized I liked it better when he was telling me he wasn't interested. Disinterest was insulting, but safe. That look scared me. Sometimes I was lulled into thinking he was something he wasn't by his relaxed posture. Then he looked at me like this and my heart wanted to relocate out of my chest as I waited to see if he'd act on it. He was the type of man that could consume me. After a man like him, I didn't know if there would be a me left. The scariest part of it of all was he looked at me like that and I wasn't sure if I cared. You know, it's probably better to keep track of where he is. I pointed towards Maxwell. Keep looking at him. There was a slight hesitation, a decision being made. I held my breath while I waited to see what he would do. He turned back towards Maxwell and the tension broke. What should I do? I asked. Wade in and try and get a little closer. He laid out a couple of beach towels he had tucked under his arms provided by the guards. He sat on one of the towels. 
I kicked off my sandals and unknotted the cover. Why am I the one going? Because I can't pick up anything from him. It would be good if we could get a clue why Suits wants him. You can tell from over here? Yes. Then shouldn't I? No. You haven't been doing it long enough and you've got too much human left on you to be that sensitive. I nodded. It made sense. I watched Maxwell as I waded into the water, getting as close as I could, but not close enough to arouse suspicion. I got about 10 feet from him, but wasn't picking up anything. I lingered in my spot, but it was futile. Futile. I waited until he started paddling out to catch a wave. Whatever fate thought I was supposed to pick up on wasn't happening. I waded back out towards the beach where fate was reclined on a towel, shirt still on. It's not like he was pale or maybe had a fear of burning. What was with the shirt? Anything, he asked, eyes still fixed on Maxwell. No. He stood and grabbed the towels, not elaborating any further. Well, either his karma doesn't swing strong enough in either direction or it's you. He started walking back to where we had initially entered the beach and I followed. And I'm guessing it's you. Fate stepped through the doors first. I'll be right there. I yelled when I lost my sandal in the sand, grabbed my shoes, and just as I was stepping through the door, I heard him. See you soon, Camilla. I sprung around just as the door was shutting to see Suits standing there. I turned to find Fate, but he was getting into his car. He paused half in, half out. What? he asked. I looked over my shoulder. The door is gone. Nothing. And that's the end of chapter 19. Stay tuned for the next chapter.